So, you've hopped onto squad for the first or thousandth time, you join a server and it's like everything is on fire. Abandoned vehicles everywhere, infantry littered all over the parish, and the team is getting pounded harder than one of those videos you've watched on that black and orange website. So you strap yourself in for the ride, and after two games, the same things are still happening. No one is having fun, and there's absolutely no cohesion at all. Well, I can almost guarantee you what's going on, because what I'm about to take you through is the biggest mistake all squad players make. How's it going, guys? My name's Honcho, and welcome to my Not Playing the Objectives video. Before we get started, though, hit that subscribe button for more squad guides, gameplay, and updates. Okay. Let's start with the basics. The main game mode you will traditionally see is Random Advance and Secure and Invasion. For this video, we will be focusing on Random Advance and Secure, but I will talk about Invasion later on in this video. Random Advance and Secure is much like Conquest on Battlefield. You have to capture and hold objectives whilst defending them from the enemy. The only main difference is each team only has one active control point at any one time, and these follow what is called a lane. But this is a lane that is not fully visible until all control points are captured and held by your team. Unlike Advanced and Secure, where all the objectives can be seen from the get-go. But as I like to say, AAS is ass. Anyway, a lane is a predetermined set of control points that has been set by the server. They range from anywhere from four control points to eight, but the most common is usually between five and seven. When the game starts, you will only be able to see one control point and it will be a blank box. Once captured, it will have your team's flag inside of it. Usually, you have to do this two more times until you hit what's called the midpoint. Once a control point has been captured, the previous point is no longer active and becomes locked in and cannot be captured by the enemy unless they capture the current active objective. This is key to know because the same goes for when you're attacking, and I'll get more onto that shortly. Lanes either generally head through the middle of the map or along the east or the west, but some can throw a spanner in the works and be very unpredictable. Now, depending on whose team has gotten lucky or set up the best during this early stage, will determine who gets to midpoint first. If it's flashing red, the enemy is currently capturing it, and if it's flashing blue, your team is capturing it. Now, these first 15 minutes of a game is where most of the mistakes can happen, and it's something that even you, as a brand new player, needs to be aware of. Because no one knows where the control points are off the get-go, a lot of squads will hop in a heli and rush for midpoint to get a good footing and set up in advance. Now that's all fine and well, so long as everyone keeps checking their maps and keeps communicating to see where the control points go. Because if they're going to the opposite side of the map where the people have rushed, then they need to be quick to dig down their radio and get back to the relevant side of the map pretty pronto. And this can be made even worse by two or three squads doing this, leaving only one squad on backup duties, which makes progression even slower. The other danger at hand is it leaves your defensive objectives extremely vulnerable to being attacked, flanked and overwhelmed by the enemy. Once again, this can be made even worse by the out of position squads who are now in transport and moving to the current attacking objective starting to set up and they are not noticing that they are already losing the defensive point. It's at this point your team is most likely to fold and be rolled because the whole team is going to end up out of position. Defense has been overrun and their hab is inactive so they have nowhere to spawn and the attacking squads are going to start attacking a point that will very quickly become irrelevant because the enemy has already neutralized your defense objective and because the hab at defense is gone or the blueberries spawn on the only available hab which is an attack point now two points out of place so you can see where this is going now there are some rare occasions that the attackers can force what's called a double neutral that's when both yours and the enemy's active objectives gets neutralized thus halting the progress of both teams until they recapture their active defensive location if this does happen the enemy team cannot stop you from capturing your defense by simply being on the capture point anymore you can literally go into a building and hide and recapture it right from underneath them However, if the enemy finds you and wipes you all out, it's going to get a lot harder to regain control of your defensive point. And also keep in mind, they can do this to you on their defensive point. Now, if the worst case happens and they capture your defense while two or three squads are still on the objective they were attacking, they are now on an inactive control point that cannot be captured and now an irrelevant part of the map. So it now goes back to these guys needing to dig down and move back into the game. 
but by this time, the enemy team has got the momentum, your team's lacking cohesion and awareness, and it's pretty much left everyone wanting to just give up and start the next game. So how do we fix this issue? Well, it all revolves around communication, awareness, and the ability to react. To start with, we have to roll the clock all the way back to the start of the game, even as early as the staging phase. And you don't have to be a squad leader to help with this either. This is going to be something that the more people know about, the better the games will become for everybody. Right, naturally, during staging phase, that is where the start of round plan should be getting put together between squad leaders. But this doesn't always happen. Now, whether you're an SL or just part of the squad, the first question should be, who's on back cap? Ideally, back cap should be shared between two squads so they can leapfrog each other to make capping as fast as possible and efficient. This is the foundation in which your team will be building upon. Always look at the map and where the control points are going to determine which is the fastest way to get infantry to the objective to capture. For example, on Yeho, it's very common for the first cap point on the southeast side to be hilltop encampment. Now, most people would send a lodgy full of infantry up there to cap. But due to the size of the hill it has to climb, it takes an eternity to drive up there. So it makes much more sense for a helicopter with an infantry squad to rush up there to cap it. You can save upwards of five minutes by doing this. Whilst that doesn't sound much, that can be enough time for the enemy team to fully cap their first point and literally be halfway through capping their second. Manikugan is another map to be aware of. When starting in the top left of the map, it's very common for the second point to be on this little island here. And if you notice, it only has land access from the eastern side. So you either need a helicopter to take infantry there or an amphibious vehicle, which is horrifically slow. Again, this is all worth knowing as just a general player because your SL may be new and not really know what to do. So I'm pretty sure they will more than appreciate the input from their squad. If you don't know where the second point is going to be, just pick what you think will be a sensible direction to head in and only push, say, four to 800 meters further from the back cap, all depending on the size of the map. Naturally, the more versed with the game and layers you become, the easier it is to work out where the next points will be. And that's when you can full send it to the right point early. But when you're on the back foot, just driving about 500 meters up and waiting can save you having to backpedal massively to get to the current objective. Ideally, you'd keep this leapfrogging routine up until you reach the midpoint. And if things have panned out well and in your favor, your team will be capping midpoint. If that's the case, in an ideal world, you want one full squad to stay on mid to act as defense with a rally and hab set close nearby and a second squad to back them up with a hab off point, but as close as it can be. There's a few reasons why I call two squads on defense. So hear me out. Firstly, two squads are harder to attack and overrun than one, you know, ape strong together. Secondly, this allows your defense to be much more flexible and fluid and gives them the ability to react to situations. So let's say squad one and squad two are on the defensive duties. An enemy heli flies overhead and someone calls it landing 300 meters north of the point. Squad one can stay on defense and squad two can push up to that area looking for the enemy and try to overrun and overwhelm that hab before they get a chance to get fully established. If successful, you've wiped out an enemy squad, found their radio and destroyed it. That's pretty much a minimum of 30 tickets the enemy has lost. What happens now is a bit of a mini morale boost. Squad 2 now returns back to the defense just in time for someone calling out an enemy lodgy getting set up down south. So this allows squad 1 to preemptively push that location while squad 2 is getting set up on defense again. This is allowing your team to be proactive against enemy attackers without calling squads away from attacking locations and without leaving your defensive point wide open. This is how teams that heavily focus on attacking bleed tickets at an expeditious rate and before they know it, they're down to 80 tickets and they've lost all cohesion and morale. Sound familiar? Now for those squads who rush up to the middle of the map or further, you guys really need to be the most aware. Due to the distance away from the rest of the team you will be, the time it would take you to pack down and move up is going to feel like an eternity and this needs to be considered. If three squads have rushed up and leaving one squad on back cap and you find yourselves all out of position, you all need to choose what you do next very carefully and all dependent on what's happening. If the defensive point is being attacked and overrun, 
then one of your squads needs to retreat to the previous objective to get set up on defense in case the current defensive objective is lost. This goes back to getting that defensive foundation in. Getting set up preemptively of that objective being lost gives a place for blueberries to spawn and strengthen the new defensive location and gives your team time to regroup, reorganize a fresh attack. The other alternative is to land as close to the defense as possible, get a new hab up and flank the guys attacking your defense. If they lose their spawn point, they can't attack and this will allow your team to regain control of the defensive location. And that third squad needs to go and get set up for attacking because chances are if your defense is being hit hard, they won't have much on their defense. So the moment your team gets spotted attacking, they will start calling people back to defend. And this can have about three things happen. Number one, a large portion of their attacking forces recede into a defensive role. Now this takes pressure off your defense eventually as people respawn, but places pressure on you as an attacking squad to take advantage of their team being out of position whilst you can. Number two, they don't react and continue attacking hard with little to no defense. Well, that should be an easy cap for you. And number three, your defense fails due to the large number of enemy squads attacking and you find yourself at an inactive location. Then you need to react quickly, finish off that enemy hub for the 20 tickets, dig down your own and get back on the defense or attack. And now you find that we've gone full circle. Now, one thing I will say is, whilst you do have armor squads on the map, they cannot be solely expected or relied upon to help with certain pushes or defensive situations, especially when unsupported. Yes, they can help with troop transportation or softening up objectives and enemy hubs in the open, but they cannot be expected to just charge into a situation mindlessly and blindly. That's how you end up losing your armor assets. Now, where invasion differs, is it can be very much a case of eggs all in one basket, especially as the attacking team. As at the start, you only have 200 tickets to play with, so everyone needs to work together to ensure a successful first point capture. If one or two squads just go off and do their own thing, that's a huge percentage of the team who isn't trying to attack, and the attacking team needs as much presence as possible to overrun and overwhelm. Without that, you aren't going to get past the first point, and therefore, you aren't going to enjoy invasion. All in all, squad is about working together, be it through communication, taking upon certain roles such as defense or attacking, and being able to adjust quickly to events that happen, whilst protecting the assets that you have. Losing five radios doesn't sound like much, but that's 100 tickets down the drain. That's one third of the average team's total. And that's it. On top of your map being your best friend for information, even if nothing's being marked, you can still see where the rest of your team is or isn't. So now you've gotten this far, you can all help steer your future teams into a positive direction. Be you a brand new player or a 5,000 hour vet. But now, if you see your team getting rolled, you now know how to avoid it. Or alternatively, if the enemy team is being rolled and rolled game after game, you now know what to do to help if you switch to their team. Be sure to check these two videos as well if you want to further your squad experience. Take care, and I'll catch you in the next video.